The federal government has listed a key arm of the Iranian regime as a terrorist organization. <laughs> Pressure has been mounting on the Liberals for years to declare Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps as a terrorist entity under Canada's criminal code. Public Safety Minister Dominic LeBlanc made the announcement earlier this afternoon. This action sends a strong message that Canada will use all of the tools at its disposal to combat the terrorist entity of the IRGC. The Iranian regime has consistently displayed disregard for human rights, both inside and outside of Iran, as well as a willingness to destabilize the international rules-based order. Our government will ensure that there is no immunity for Iran's unlawful actions and its support of terrorism. The CBC's Karina Roman joins me live from Ottawa for more on this. So, Karina, take us through what this terrorist designation actually means. Okay, so it's designated the IRGC as a terrorist organization under Canada's criminal code. Uh, and, and so that comes with um, an impact. And I will get to that in one moment. I just want to make sure that people understand what the IGRC is. So the IRGC, um, it's a branch of the Iranian Armed Forces. It answers directly to Iran's supreme leader. It's an ally of such other designated organizations, such as Hamas. Um, it is behind the shooting down of that flight, PS752, over Tehran that had dozens of Canadians and people tied to Canadians in Canada on it that died. Um, so there is obviously reaction to this designation, um, including from a Liberal MP who is of Iranian heritage, Elias Sassi. Have a listen to what he had to say. Today is a very significant uh, day. Today we finally uh, recognize the IRGC for what it is. It's an entity that has uh, suffocated, uh, bludgeoned uh, Iranians at home and is also responsible uh, for fomenting instability throughout the world. So the impact of this designation means that anyone who uh, financially or materially supports the group here in Canada can be charged. Uh, now, they did discuss how there has to be intent. Uh, you have to know that the money you're sending is going uh, to help um, this organization, uh, but uh, that is the, the material impact. Um, banks can also freeze assets. That's another part of it. Uh, it also comes, though, now with a renewed warning for Canadians from our foreign affairs minister. Have a listen to what she had to say. We've been saying for years now uh, to Canadians, don't go to Iran. With this decision today, there is a heightened risk of arbitrary detention in Iran. So my message is clear. For those who are in Iran right now, it's time to come back home. And for those who are planning to Iran, to go to Iran, don't go. Now, Jolie went on to explain that that's because we haven't had uh, diplomatic relations with Iran for quite some time, and we don't have, Canada does not have an embassy there. There's no one there to help if you were to be arbitrarily detained. Uh, so the mm -hmm. warning is uh, Iran is a no-go for Canadians. So what did the minister say about the timing of this announcement, Karina? Because as we were saying, there has been pressure for years. And that was the very first question uh, put to Dominic LeBlanc at the news conference. What took so long? Because you did have years of pressure, uh, political pressure from the Conservatives and the NDP, from Iranian Canadians. You had the motion, a Conservative motion passing in 2018. Um, you had then the shooting down of PS752, and of course that led to the families of the victims really upping the pressure uh, on the government to do this. You had another vote, a unanimous vote, on a motion to do this uh, just last month in the House of Commons. But Dominic LeBlanc says this was a deliberate decision, uh, that a threshold has to be met, and that Cabinet uh, made this deliberate decision based on advice from the security agencies and the RCMP. Have a listen. I'm told that there's literally a monthly review by the security agencies of different entities around the world and whether or not the threshold has been met 
and whether or not they're in a position to recommend to the government the listing under the criminal code. So the government of Canada has concluded after a deliberative process uh, based on very, very strong and compelling evidence that the cabinet received that now is the time to list the IRGC uh, as a criminal, uh, as a criminal terrorist entity. Now, in question period, uh, Conservative leader Pierre Polyev also questioned the timing, uh, but he uh, believes or said that there's a, an, a connection between Monday's by-election in Toronto uh, and this announcement. Um, and, you know, that was met, of course, by a, an argument back from the government saying there's no such connection. Uh, before this move, the government did have uh, a designation for Iran um, under the Immigration Refugee Protection Act uh, for um, Iran as, a, as a, a sponsor of terrorism that meant that senior officials of the regime could not come into Canada and the Canada Border Services Agency had said that they had, um, you know, banned people from coming in uh, because of that measure, and they could investigate Iranians who were here in Canada uh, from an immigration uh, perspective. Uh, this, of course, changes everything in that it's not just about whether you can be in the country or not. Uh, it's it's about whether it's a crime uh, to be here and be materially or financially supporting uh, the IRGC. Karina, thank you. The CBC's Karina Roman in Ottawa.